As you know, we've already been talking about the abiding sphere, your new identity in Christ, and what does it look like to walk with Jesus that Ephesians 1 talks about. I don't want you to think that a church is the building. The church itself, it doesn't all happen here. A lot of it happened in homes, in coffee shops. It happened as people did life together. jumped both feet in, we attended the young adults, so we got to know some of the staff, met Sam Meredith, and then got immediately into a home group. And so that really um, got us connected, got us involved, and then we actually ended up getting baptized together here at Real Life. You start your relationship with the Lord, you're already connected, you actually, you know, you're led to understand the Lord through the relationships in the small group. This college ministry puts you right into a small group. You start to build Christian friends, you receive Christ, you got jobs. Absolutely. <laughs> right? Uh, you moved out of your parents' house. That had to be nice. We got married. Yeah, got married then first. Moved out. Then moved out. You <laughs> actually, there's an order to that. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so uh, when you were in that small group, what did that look like? I mean, was it just go to a, a small group? Or was there more to the relationships in that group than just doing going to a place on a given night? Being from here, I had friends from high school and I was I was pretty well connected and plugged in just from being here growing up here and so getting connected in a different way to people who are like-minded who want to do the same type of um, extracurricular activities and um, are similar in their walk with the Lord or at least um, are in their journey there and also who who want the best for you um, so I think that it was a big change to have people that um, I could call and kind of um, spill my dirty laundry to and know that they would um, be there for me um, in a lot of different ways. It wasn't just we show up once a week to this home group and that's it. The Bible tells us that it's my job to lead us in our marriage and so what does that look like? And uh, the home group was a great chance to be with other men that I could understand what my role is and how does that role play out. And it was nice to know I'm not the only man that struggles with that. You know, fortunately in my group, a lot of the guys were brought to the church by their by their wives. And then we had this huge responsibility that we've got to lead our family now. And so um, having those other men that I could meet with on the regular, I mean, we, from, from the home group, we had men's groups, we had all kinds of things that we could just hang out and just figure out how do we take the responsibility that we have and how do we do that the right way. What's the most important things? How does the Word of God and abiding in Christ in, impact the church, how does it impact the home? Because, you know, like you said, you didn't know what a spiritual parent was like. How do you learn what a spiritual parent or a wife or a husband is, is like? Well, you look around at the men, you're like, okay, when the church is interacting together and you're seeing what, okay, that's love. That's not what I thought it was. Or that's what a parent looks like. That's what they care about when they're when, you're, when the goal is raising your children to know the Lord. That's what a marriage ought to look like. That's how they spend their time. The church sphere is a hospital for the sick where it's okay to come and, and be hurting. And it's also a place where people care about you and there's give and take. There's seasons where we limp in here and people gotta hold us up. If we fall down, they gotta come and get us. And then there's times where we're watching for the other person. In the church sphere, um, we talk about, yeah, it's weekend services, but it's life group, but it's serving, and, and what does it look like to be the body of believers, not just go to church, but to be a part of the family of God. And, and you guys are pictures of that, and uh, I love celebrating that. One of the things we've always loved about real life is we feel like you are very real, all the leadership is, about both the benefits and the challenges of a church this size. And so immediately when we started coming and we heard from the pulpit over and over, coming on Sundays is great, but you guys, I, I don't know if you're not here for three weeks. I don't know what's going on at home. Please plug in, get into a small group. And so we saw that emphasis on, on that relationship and we've benefited from building those relationships, having people pour into us and then being able to pour into others. But but that right off the bat, I thought, man, they, they really get it because the size is great and we can meet an incredible need in this community. 
but you know, you can also get lost in it. And I think that the leadership here is very real about dealing with that head on. Let's get plugged in, serve somewhere, join a small group. There's plenty of places. And, and that's where we create that smaller community and the accountability. So we, we've loved that right from the start. So you guys got involved in a small group and started to build relationships with people. And obviously, you know, um, not everybody's called to lead a group, but everybody's called to serve. And, you know, it doesn't take long around either one of you to know you're, you're good at doing relationship with people, but you also have leadership skill sets. And so pretty soon they're saying to you, hey, uh, we'd like you to lead a group. So they made sure you were online, you went through the, uh, the, the one-on-one class, membership class, you went, okay, here's what this church is about, here's the doctrine, here's the, we'd love you to get into a group, and you guys agreed to do all that, and, and now they're branching a group out with you. When it comes to the church sphere, when the church sphere functions as it should, you know, where, you know, we get to know each other, we're carrying each other's burdens, there's honesty and transparency in the church, in what way do you think that it impacts in, in the mental health, because you work there in the hospital. The whole idea of relationship, I think that's what a lot of people are missing, trying to help them understand what a healthy relationship actually looks like, because there's, there's a lot of people that are striving to find it in very unhealthy ways. I think that's an important thing about the church, right? Yeah. I think that's why Paul, when he starts talking about abiding in Christ, then he does the church, then he does the home, then he does the world, then he does the spiritual realm. People always ask me why the church before the home. Well, if you got saved, but you come from the, I mean, Paul writes Ephesians the book to those in Ephesus, so they're Greeks, Romans, whatever. They, they, the only kind of home they know is the home they had been handed. Right. So unless something happens in the small group, the church that shows them, oh, this is what a marriage is supposed to look like, not that version you were handed. Right. That's why going to an event, putting on a face, isn't the biblical church. Right. Yes, we come, we hear, but getting to know each other, modeling for one another, honesty and transparency, you know, now people go, oh, that's what love looks like. Mm -hmm. So now I know what to change about my life that impacts my home, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that's what leadership looks like at the church. It's not self-serving a, a privilege, it's a, a responsibility to lay down my life for another. Okay, that's what leadership looks like. So now when I take leadership back home, I'm not going, I'm the leader, I'm the boss, do what I say. That comes from the world. Mm -hmm. It's, I lay down my life for you and I go first. I serve. Mm -hmm. And so as you see that, that builds relationships in the, in the, in the church that now kind of impact the home. So if the church was to, to live this out, really, the impact to the home and to every other part is so huge. And I'm, I'm watching your guys' as kids, you know, the way they serve, the way they love, the way they connect. And, uh, and that's why I'm so glad you guys are home, home group leaders because you've done that. Now they know, you, you can actually show them that, but you do it in such a humble way. How did you get your kids to want to be here to build these kind of relationships. Was there, is there a trick to that for these families that? <laughs> well, we, we would drag them basically everywhere we would go uh, a lot of the times. I think part of that again is that mindset, lead by example, um, and, and inviting them in. It's not saying, oh, they're just a kid. People that go to church but are not in a relational environment, what's one thing you would say to them that would be a reason for them to move into that? that version of the church? I think I would challenge them that they are starving themselves. You can't eat one meal a week and live on that. And so not only do we need to have daily time in the Word, but to, to be part of a group that is doing life with you. So when things are great, you celebrate together. When things are down, you push through that together. And Sundays are great, but it's just not enough to get you through the other six days.